Hey everyone. So first I want to say that we should start by talking about what the grid is good for, what it isn't good for. I know we've discussed this in class, but I wanted to preface the next few videos with just a brief overview uh, of the grid and um, the primary thing to keep in mind, which is that, well, according to Mueller Brockman, that old nut, they're an aid, not a guarantee. So don't get frustrated if they don't quite yield the results you expected at first. That's totally natural. This is a new system that you're working with. Uh, and I wouldn't want you to think that they're just going to spit out perfect page layouts. The second thing is, um, and I, again, I know we acknowledge this in class, but keep in mind that if a grid is not useful, then don't use it. Um, I don't think there are any hard and fast rules about this. Again, it's an aid, not a guarantee. So if you find yourself being like, oh, I wish I could do this, but the grid won't let me, that's a big red flag. And that just means that you need to either redefine the grid or ignore it totally and uh, move on from there. Definitely wouldn't want this to get in the way of you designing. You can design more intuitively with one and kind of use it when you need to and ignore it when you don't. Keep in mind that the whole purpose is just to bring some level of continuity and minimize the amount of choices you as a designer have to make every time you're putting together a new spread or page layout. Um, so the more you ignore it, the less continuity you're gonna have. However, you also don't want it to be so constraining that it's really only giving you one result that you're unhappy with. So try and find a balance. So in the next few videos, I'll go over how we can create a grid a simple one, then a more complex one, and then an even more complex one, and then how to use it in all three scenarios.